We're going to walk through an example problem of distillation composition control. And we're going to use for this example a PID, or Proportional Integral Derivative Controller. So the objective of this is to try to maintain a, a distillate composition right here by changing the reflux ratio. So how much is recycled back to the column versus how much is produced. And as you recycle more back to the column, the purity goes up. But we want to first of all generate a model of this, a simplified model, in this case a first order plus dead time model, and be able to characterize it. Okay, we have an allowable range for a reflux ratio between 1 and 10, and we're initially at 0.935 mole fraction for the top composition of the lighter compound, which is uh, cyclohexane. And we have a target composition of 0.97 with an allowable range between 0.97 0.96 and 0.98, and we want to design a PID controller to be able to stay within this product specification range. So manipulated variable is a reflux ratio. The control variable, the thing that we're trying to maintain at a set point, is the distillate composition. And then we have a couple measured disturbances. And we're only going to change this one and see how it's going to affect the controller. So we're going to introduce a disturbance later on. So first of all, we need to determine the steady state conditions. And we'll design, uh, what's the design set point? So initially, it's a, a reflux ratio equal to 3.0. And then we also have a uh, our controller bias, our U bias value is when we turn on the controller. It's whatever the reflux ratio is. So the reflux ratio initially is equal to 3, and then it's going to change from there. Okay, so that's going to be our U bias value that we got to put into our PID controller. So first of all, we want to estimate a model. Let's go ahead and do a doublet test on that and generate this dynamic response. So to start, um, I'm just going to start from zero here. Uh, we're going to come to apmonitor.com slash PDC. This is the Process Dynamics and Control website. And we're going to come down to assignments here on the right. And then if you scroll down on the list of assignments, we're going to be doing the distillation control problem. And down at the bottom of this, it says show source code. So this is our distillation column model. It's kind of long. There are 32 states, 30 trays, one reboiler, and one condenser. And we're going to be simulating it with this little loop right here. So if you want to, just grab the code uh, from here. It's a little Git code. Uh, if it doesn't work in Microsoft Edge, you might need to go into a different browser. So I'm going to go into Chrome instead. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and kill that one in Edge. Sometimes it doesn't work for me in Edge. Um, and so I've just got to go to... Okay, there it is. There's the distillate. Um, and I'm going to go to show source code and just grab this. Okay, copy it out. And I'll just put it into one of my favorite editors here, Notepad. And this I'll call distillation.py. Okay, and you can. I'm going to edit it with Python 3.6. Okay, or you can do Notepad++, for example. Um, okay, let's just go ahead and um, run it the first time just to see what it gives us. And we want to do a doublet test. So we're going to simulate this for the reflux ratio going up and down. There you can see the feed composition going down. Um, but what we want to do here is, is uh, give it a doublet test. So I'm just going to come up here on, the, uh, on this. And let me first of all just go ahead and uh, you know, stop any uh, disturbance. OK, I have a feed flow. OK, there's my feed flow or my feed concentration disturbance. And then there's also a feed flow disturbance. Just going to comment those out. And then I'm going to set up the doublet test here. So at uh, 10 minutes, it's going to increase to 4. And then let's do at 50 minutes, it's going to decrease to 2. It starts at 3. OK, the reflux ratio is just the uh, steady state okay, of 3. And I just have that set initially to every value, uh, time length t, 100 time points. 
Um, and, uh, and then I have, um, let's go back down, or uh, maybe 40, and then we'll do 70 onward. We'll give it a value of three again. Okay, so this is gonna be our doublet test. Let's go ahead and run this again. And then it's gonna produce a data.txt file. So there's our reflex ratio going up, down, and then back again. And there you can see the distillate composition going uh, up and down. Okay, and let's take a look at the data file that it produced. It should produce it in that same folder. Okay, so we have first is the time column, and then the second column is gonna be the reflux ratio, and then the third column is the distillate composition. So let's fit a first order plus dead time model now. I'm gonna go grab a script for that just on the website. We've gone over this example a couple times before, but this is gonna be an FOPDT optimization fit. Okay, here it is, and there's um, some source code. Right there, fit FOPDT to data. And here's the source code. Again, I'm gonna go back to Chrome because this one doesn't work as well for downloading the code. Okay, come back over here. There is the fitting file, and copy this over. Okay, now with this one, we already have a data.txt file, and this one should be just a uh, fit FOPDT. It should be able to run uh, right away. We might have to modify some things if we have, you know, like a column header or something like that. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in. Here's the code. I'm just gonna load the data.txt file. It's already set up, so the first column is time. Second column is the input, and the third column is the output. And uh, if you have like a header or something, you'd want to do skip row equals one. If you just want to skip the first row when you read it in. Okay, and otherwise it's gonna take it from there and just go ahead and fit our first order plus dead time model. Let's see how well this does. I might need to modify the initial guess just a little bit. Sometimes the optimizer doesn't work very well unless you give it a good initial guess. So let's go down and see what our initial guess is right here. Okay, so there's a km value. I'm going to change this to 0 0.1 and a tau m value. This is our tau p, the uh, value from our model, the time constant. And I'll set this about to 30. Okay, and I'll set the initial theta value to 0. And let me run this. Sometimes it takes a little while um, there's the initial sum of squared error objective, and so it's going to try different values of those parameters until it is able to reduce the objective function and come up with a good first order plus dead time model that then we can use for tuning PID controllers. And so while this is computing, oh, look at that, it came up with a solution. We had the initial guess, which is in blue, and then we had the optimized first order plus dead time, which is in uh, red, and there you can see the data as well. So it looks like a fairly good fit. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's not doing as well when the composition goes a little bit lower, but in the upper region, it's doing okay. So let's uh, just grab these values. Here's our kp, tau p, and theta p. And I'll come back over here. Okay, so we estimated a model, and I'll just go ahead and paste those in there. There's our kp, tau p, and theta p. That's our first order plus dead time model, tau p dy dt equals negative y plus kp u t minus theta p. Okay, there's our model. Now we have PID parameters that we want to obtain. Uh, you can come back here to the course website and grab those from the controller design. Here is a PID. Okay, and you'll see some tuning rules like IMC tuning rules. Uh, this is a proportional integral derivative. You can also use PI controller to start with. Just leave the derivative term off and then add it if needed. I'm just gonna use the uh, IMC moderate tuning. Okay, really easy to remember. It's just KC equals one over KP and tau I equals tau p. Okay, with no dead time, this is pretty insignificant right here. So I'm just going to use these two values. And I have, uh, let's see, 
uh, 0.2. So that is going to give me a KC of about 5 to start with. And then the tau I value is going to be about 30. Okay, and um, okay, I'm just going to start with those values, and then let's uh, let's go from there. Okay, we'll implement the PID controller. So I'm going to put that back into my model now, the PID controller equations, and so we fit. And so let's just copy this one just so we had the uh, step response. And this one I'm going to call uh, distill uh, PID. OK, I'm going to come back to get um, an example here, example code for PID controller. You can also implement this yourself. There's a PID one. If you want to start with kind of an example uh, you know, sample code here for PID controller, just come down here and copy in some of this. Okay, so I'm going to select get code here. I'll just copy this and then let me put this into my distill PID. Okay, I'm going to be doing a little bit more editing here, so I'm just going to grab, uh, do this in Notepad++, a little easier to see. Okay. And I just need to basically copy this loop right here and then where it normally integrates the model. Actually, I'll do the upper. Okay, well, I guess I need some more of that. Okay, I'll start with delta T. Okay, and then I'll just delete the rest of that and then come back down into my, um, into this code. Okay, and try to integrate in the PID controller. So normally I just had this loop just to simulate, but now I want to have the PID controller there as well. And I'm going to replace uh, this one thing, which is this ODE integrator right there. I need all of this down in this new PID loop. So I'm going to come down into this PID loop and where I normally integrate the process, I'm just going to paste in the the uh, distillation one. I'm going to integrate the distillation model from an x naught value. Um, here's my TS. I'm going to just integrate, um, you know, one uh, time step forward. So let me just go ahead and comment this a little bit. So this is a distillation uh, solution. Okay, one time step. So we're going to implement, what we're going to implement here is our, uh, our reflux ratio. And so our reflux ratio I is going to be equal to my output I. Okay, that's going to be the output from my PID controller. And then my PV is going to be equal to my, this is going to be equal to my, my, uh, my composition. Okay, and so I just need to extract that. What is my composition? Okay, that is going to be equal to XD. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. There is my distillate composition right here, XD. And so if I just want to extract that, I need to fill it in. Because I have 32 states here, I just need to take the very first one and substitute that in for the PV. So now I've linked it up with the PID equation. Here's the uh, derivative calculation. Here's the integral. Um, and then I have the proportional, the integral, and the derivative. And then there's my output, which is going to be my U bias, my initial output, which is OP0, plus the PI and the D values. Now here's where I implement the anti-reset windup and the clipping of the output. So I can't go above 10 or below 1. So I'm going to have that right here for the upper and lower limits. Just go ahead and change that to 1. Oh, change that to 1. OK, and I'm going to set my tau D equal to 0. And my KC um, is going to be equal to 5. And then my tau i is going to be equal to 30. OK, and I can just delete these PID. 
Okay, so I think I'm set. Uh, I want to change my set point. Um, my set point is going to be right here, and I'll do that as ones times 0 0.935, and then starting at 25, or I'll start at 10. Um, I'll change that to 0 0.9397. Okay, so there's my set point. Okay, let's see if I've got anything else here that I needed. I don't need these uh, reflux ratios right here. I'm going to be specifying those from the... Um, okay, I've already got my set point right there. So, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and delete the set point above just so I can show the step change. Okay, so I'm just integrating these two codes together with the PID uh, controller. And let's go ahead and see if this will run. Okay, I've got my distill PID. We'll just go with the first bug and see if we can fix it as we go. But um, let's go ahead and run this and see if we've implemented our PID controller. Okay, so NS is the number of points that we are solving at. Let's go down. I think that's in our loop. Um, and it came from zero to NS there. Okay, so the number of points, let me just go ahead and fill that in. So just kind of real-time debugging here. Um, this is where I, get, I, I did my time points. Okay, so here it is, NS equals 100. And then I'll just have my number of sample points equal to that. Okay, so I've got something out of bounds here. Okay, let me try this again. I uh, just the where I'm integrating from. Um, I want to go instead of this one, I'll go one to NS. Okay, because my initial conditions are already fixed, so it was going to be out of bounds if I do the I plus one. So I'll just do I and I minus one. So just keeping kind of the indices. Uh, straight here. See if this is going to work. Okay, I've got another one here. XDI plus one. I just need to change this back. I just started with uh, slightly different indices here. I'm just going to put that as I because it went up to 101. Um, okay, let's see if I've got this. Okay, the next bug. So this is kind of typical for me. I, I try to code it and then I'll run into a couple bugs. Okay, so X and Y must have the same first dimension. I'm trying to uh, copy something here. Okay, let's see what that is. I'm gonna come down here, X naught. Okay, equals y negative 1. And I think I had my x naught. Let's see what that is up here. Okay, so there is x steady state. And let's just see what y uh, negative 1 returns. Okay, so it's those values. And x naught are those values. Okay, so let's see where this thing is going. Okay, and the error is with this one right here. It doesn't like that. I need to be able to record my states for the next time it cycles through. And so I'm running into a problem right now with that. Uh, it looks like it, the dimensions do not agree. So let me just check that. That's 32. And that's 64. Hmm, so why is that 64 instead? Um, okay, oh, you know what? I think I know what's going on there. I'm gonna, um, oh, you know what? I, I just need to do this. Size y uh, negative one. It's just gonna take the very last one. So those should agree. I have the same size for both of those. Let me just go and run it again, see what that error was again. See if it gives us a little bit more information. Okay, so there's a 100 and then one is 101. 
Okay, so that's, uh, again, these, these indices are off by just one, and I just need to say that that is ns. Okay, just coming down through here, just modifying the PID code. I just saw that they were off by one there, and let's just check the very bottom part of this. Okay, I think that's right now. Okay, I'll save it again. Let's run it one more time and just go through it. So just, um, okay, I've got PVI plus one. You know, I had these I plus one set up and so I just need to Okay, I'll go ahead and save that. And let me, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, keep going through this, just kind of showing you the debugging that I typically do when I'm solving these. Uh, in this case, I just kind of got it off by one. So what it's doing is I need to just say if um, i is less than ns, Okay, and then it won't try to access it if it's like 101 there. Okay, run this one more time. Okay, zero to size 100. I is less than NS, I think it's NS minus 1 there. Okay, I'm still off here. Let's see if I can figure this out. I've got another one which is OP and then I'm starting with uh, let me just do a, a np.size for my OP that is a hundred and I have NS is equal to 100 so it's a hundred okay so um, let's go ahead and I think I'm off on the dimensions on this one as well it's that very last line after it finishes right here I'm just gonna comment these out for now I think it actually takes care of those I don't need those there in this implementation on how I did the indices and just kind of shifting things uh, shifting things around okay so um, let's just try it again if it the very last point that was really just to take care of the last point in the plot sometimes it it has a problem with it okay so it looks like it went to a lower bound on the reflux ratio and um, so let's check this one out okay so it's going kind of in the opposite direction that it should be going and so let's uh, let's take a look at what we're doing here we start off at i equals one and then we go up to a hundred and every time we have this PV, and this one's going to be taking, um, you know, this is this is going to be taking, uh, going set point minus the PV value. So let's just go ahead and print that out. I'll print set point I, and I'll print the PV I, and we'll just take a look at those at every time point going along. Okay, so we have, uh, we definitely have a positive error there. Okay, and if i is greater than one, then we calculate our derivative. Okay, and our integral, and then we'll have our proportional, and our integral, and our derivative. And I think what I forgot to do here is my op0. Uh, I needed to set that to, um, three okay that was my u bias value let me run this again okay so there you can see the distillate composition going up and uh, it had a reflux ratio that increased initially there and then kind of went down so let's see if i can uh, increase improve the tuning for this i'm going to set this to 20 and there I have my tau i value. Okay, and let's see if I can run this again. So I'm just gonna increase my gain on my controller 
And there you can see it coming up just a little bit more. Let me make it come up just, uh, I'll set that to 50 now. Okay, so it's getting closer. Uh, I still have, it's not quite getting up to that point where it's going to meet the set point. So let's go ahead and just decrease the tau i value. Okay, I'm gonna set that to 15. Maybe make it a little bit faster on the integral part. Okay, so it's getting a little bit closer. Let me set that down to uh, five now on the tau i value. Okay, so it's reaching the set point now. And so you can see the PID controller is working. It's reaching the set point. Maybe I wanna tune it just a little bit more aggressively. Uh, I'll do 70 and two there. Okay, a little bit too much overshoot. So let's back that uh, down a little bit more. Okay, so I'm just changing the integral and the um, integral time constant. Okay, so fairly good performance there. I might need to go just a little bit further in time to be able to see everything that I need to on that. So let's go out further in time here. We wanna go maybe to 100. Okay, instead of just, um, I'll set that to 101 time points. So every minute we'll get a new uh, distillate composition and then make an adjustment. I was only going to 10 in that case. Okay, so there it is. There's my uh, performance. I have my initial set point. Um, you know, you can see it trending up there and it tries to control it and then gets it back to the set point. Now I want to introduce, for this next part, I want to introduce my feed concentration change. Okay, that's going to be about time equals 50. And let's see how well it's going to be able to control it um, within that range. Now you can see here uh, when it, uh, I have this feed composition change right here, it starts to go down. So the controller responds by increasing the reflux ratio. And it gets to the point where it can't go any higher. It can't go any higher than 10 and the composition still falls. Okay, so this is as good as the controller could actually do can't do any better than this because it reaches that upper limit and then stays there. So you can see that uh, it's kind of a trick problem here. We've got a, um, you know, a, a problem that I've given you where it's actually not possible to maintain that set point with that disturbance that came in there, the feed composition disturbance. Okay, so that's it. I kind of, this was a little bit messy because I worked through the bugs and kind of developed this in real time, but hopefully it was informative to see how to implement a PID controller. And, uh, you know, here's the, just as we go through it again, here are the remaining uh, parts of this. Uh, we had the disturbance rejection. We went from 0.5 to 0.42, and then we tuned our controller uh, to try to meet that set point. Okay, so that's it uh, for this. I'll go ahead and post some of this code to the, uh, to the page as well so that you can use it and look at it.